Okay. Hi, I'm just getting everything set up, letting people tune in. Hello everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna pin this. Okay, cool. Hi everyone. Um, so we're gonna get started here. Um, my name is Tessa. Um, I'm an environmental educator. Um, I've worked at aquariums, nature conservancies, and science centers, educating people about um, different animals and also working with animals. And today I'm going to teach you guys um, about one of my favorite group of animals, birds, and specifically songbirds. Um, so please feel free, free to ask questions along the way. Um, I'll try to answer them and yeah, let's get started. So we're gonna be talking about this group of birds here. Um, so these are songbirds. You probably recognize a few of them. Um, and in order to understand what a songbird is, is to understand the difference between a call and a song. So a call is a very long, um, I mean, a song is a very long um, pattern of calls. So it has a pattern, it's longer, a little bit more complex, and it's specific to the kind of bird that is singing. Whereas a call is a little bit shorter. Um, songs as well are mostly called by males um, to attract a mate or defend a territory. Whereas a call is kind of um, a male or a female kind of announcing themselves, being like, hi, I'm over here. Um, so that's a call. So they tend to be shorter. Um, so songbirds are unique in that they're different kinds of birds that can make songs. Um, so I'm going to educate you guys a little bit about some common songbirds in North America. Um, and yeah, uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to start first with the house sparrow. So these guys are really all over the US. Um, they're very small sparrows. Um, they like to be in cities, but they can also be on the countryside. Um, I also, what I really like about them is that they like to take dust baths. So the males, the males here, the females here. And so these guys will roll around in the dust, uh, get all dusty, it helps them clean their feathers later. Um, and then they get actually very territorial of the little area um, where they took their dust bath, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, so this is a song sparrow's call. Um, or that's their song. And then a house sparrow, this is their kind of their more of their call. Kind of similar. So you'll notice with the song and the call, the song is a little bit more um, strung together like a song, um, whereas the calls are a little bit more broken up. So next, we're going to talk about another one of my favorites, um, the catbird. So males and females actually look very similar. Um, so there's not really a difference, but they have a little bit of red on their tails. Um, overall, they're pretty gray, um, but they also have kind of like a black hat on, which I like. <laughs> um, so their songs and calls sound very different, which I think is cool. Um, so their song is like this. So it's pretty advanced. Um, these guys can make over a hundred different sounds. They're pretty um, advanced songbirds, which is really cool. And then with their calls, it kind of it it kind of more sounds like um, the reason that they got their name. It kind of sounds like they're meowing like a cat. <laughs> Yeah, so they're very easy to identify. Um, very charismatic little birds. I, I've really liked working with these birds. Um, so 
Next, we're going to talk about the American robin. Um, so if you haven't seen one of these birds, um, they look like this. Male and female also look kind of similar, but females right here are a little bit lighter in color. Um, so um, if you haven't seen uh, um, American robin, you've probably heard of robin's eggs. They're a really pretty blue. Um, and so they're a shade of blue, blue that people really like. I love them. My mom loves them. Um, and so I've been told that their calls kind of sound like sea, uh, their songs kind of sound like seesaws. Um, let me know if you agree. Uh, so this is their song. And then their calls are um, obviously shorter. Some people call it tutting. Yeah, so these are great birds. Um, me and my family actually just watched a whole nest of these um, American robins. Um, all the little babies grew up. It was really fun. Um, so next we have um, the cardinal. So these are very popular birds, very beautiful. The males are obviously red, um, probably um, what you think of when you think of a cardinal, but I think the females are also really beautiful, um, a little bit more subtle. Um, with cardinals, um, the more red a male is, the better they are at a, attracting a mate, which is cool. Um, and they are seed eaters. Um, so um, basically with birds, you can tell their diets by the size of their beaks or how their beaks look. So with these guys, their beaks are a little bit stout, um, a little bit shorter, um, so they can crack open seeds. And I've heard that cardinals... Um, really like sunflower seeds. <laughs> um, so their calls, um, some people think that they, it sounds like they're saying birdie in theirs. Again, let me know if you agree. <laughs> and then their calls, or shorter calls are very cute, very short. And then the last bird here is a little bit, um, not as common, but um, you'll find them in grassy areas. Um, they really like to be perched up looking around. And for whatever reason, I have a particular uh, place in my heart for these birds. They're really fun to watch. Um, so this is the red-winged blackbird. Um, so the males obviously have that really beautiful red shoulder pad. The females do have a little bit of red, but they're definitely not as um, drastic. Um, and these birds, for being so small, um, are really territorial. <laughs> um, so even if you get near them, you'll hear this their call that I'm about to play, for, or their song for you that I'm about to play. Um, and uh, they'll start dive bombing you. Um, they have a lot of personality. Um, and because they are so territori territorial, they'll go after birds much larger than they are, like big hawks and stuff like that, um, which I think is pretty great. Um, and their call is really unique. It's a little, um, well, you'll understand. <laughs> Um, and this call here is described to be a more metallic -y call. If you get more into bird calls, there's different ways to describe them. And I think the red-winged blackbird is a really good example of like a metallic -y call. Um, and then this is another sound that they make as well. Yeah, so... Um, like I said, um, these guys are in grassy areas, um, still in North America, very common here. Um, and they're also just very easy to identify. If you hear that metallic you call, you immediately know um, that those are the birds that you're hearing. Um, so a lot of the questions that I get while educating um, about birds, about other animals, is ways that you can help them. Um, so with birds, it's actually pretty easy. There are a lot of basic things that you can change in your behaviors um, in order to help songbirds. So 
One of those is keeping your cats indoors, which is something that people wouldn't necessarily think of, but um, outdoor cats can eat over a billion birds a year, so, or baby birds anyways. Um, so it's important to keep your cats indoors um, and also bird perf bird proofing your windows. Um, so cardinals uh, are a specific bird that can, since they, um, you can kind of see them really clearly in reflections and stuff like that. So they um, have been known to attack their reflections in windows, which can actually sometimes be an issue. Um, so it's very important to make sure there uh, that your windows are bird proof by just putting up a nice little decal or something just to make sure that birds don't get confused and strike it. Um, not using pesticides in your lawns are a really great way to do it or natural pesticides um, just because um, American Robin for instance really loves to eat earthworms um, and all of them like to eat different kinds of insects so um, making sure that they um, aren't eating anything that they shouldn't be um, is a good way to help them out. And then additionally, if you plant native plants in your yards, you'll attract native bugs, meaning that you'll attract native birds. Um, so that's another really great way to help them out. Um, and yeah, um, I'm really thankful that you guys tuned in today. Um, hope you learned a little bit about bird calls. Um, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to um, follow my educational Instagram. I pinned it on the um, comment there, um, a tree frog named Buttons. Um, so on that Instagram, I talk about the different animals that I've worked with, um, as well as answer any questions that you guys might have about um, wildlife. Um, someone just asked me what my favorite bird is. That's a really good question, let me think. I really love barred owls. Um, so barred owls are a really beautiful kind of owl. They're um, brown and white speckled. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with one that was non-releasable named Olive. Um, and they're just very gentle animals. Um, obviously you don't bother them, but um, just a really great bird to watch. Um, and their calls are also really nice to listen to. Um, I can answer any other questions that you guys might have about birds or animals. Um, if you want to comment them, uh, I can I can stay a little bit longer and answer them if you guys want. Um, I can just wait, I guess. Um, but yeah, I can point out um, some other really great songbirds in this cool graphic here. Um, let's see. There's so many. This is a goldfinch, which I really like, which is pretty pretty easy to identify the goldfinch is nice. Um, oh, that's a really great, great question. Um, so Megan asked what bird is um, non-native, but you wouldn't expect it to be non-native. Um, so of the birds that we talked about, um, this guy, the house sparrow is actually non-native. Um, they were in, introduced um, uh, in, to the US from Europe in about the 1800s, a very long time ago, um, and they just were really successful. Um, so because they've been here for a really long time, um, in the grand scheme of things, I guess, um, they're essentially native at this point just because um, they've had a long time here. Um, but technically, they're um, what we call an old world sparrow, uh, meaning that they're from Europe and not actually from the US. Um, so that's a cool little fact. <laughs> Um, all right, if we don't have any other questions here, I'm going to sign off. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, um, I love talking about birds um, and other animals, but um, I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to talk to you guys today. Um, again, if you would like to learn more about animals or if you have any questions at all about animals, please follow my educational Instagram, a tree frog named Buttons. Um, I used to have a frog named Buttons, and that's how it all started. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks so much. Um, if you have any questions, just drop me a line. And I hope you um, can take the calls that you learned today and listen to them in your world. So have a good one, guys.